photography. Photography is a science and an art, which um, and generally meets with approval with everyone. Everyone loves photography. You know, whether it's trying to capture um, a wonderful sunset or the first steps of your child uh, walking. <clears throat> Those images that you create are something that we all aspire for. Capturing a really nice uh, smile these are moments that we look for. But very few people actually look back and, and think about the technology that goes behind making these photographs or making this possible. My name is Kishore Bhargav, and I'm going to talk to you about, or actually walk you through a little visual timeline of the technology behind uh, photography. <clears throat> a long time ago, between the Chinese and the Greeks, they seem to have figured out everything about photography. Fourth century BC is when there is documented evidence of the term optic, which is absolutely key in, in photography. Photography is made up of a Greek word which uh, uh, has light as one component of it, and that's where it comes from. It took us a long time from, from that point to come on and actually see some real photographs happen. The first recorded photograph in 1826, when you look at it today, you say, oh, it's a terrible print, it's got all this grain on it. But at the time this photograph was taken, it was a technological marvel. This photograph took eight hours to make. So in, in photography terms, this is an eight hour exposure. It took the whole day to make this one image. But that didn't stop us. From there on, we just didn't look back. We got still photographs and we said, okay, we want movies. We want photographs that are going to actually uh, give us uh, pictures, moving pictures, motion pictures. This galloping horse uh, came about in uh, 1887, so it's a little after the first photograph, and it's basically made up of 12 images of the horse. So you know, you know the old classic thing of you have a lot of images, you flip through them, and you get motion. That's how this was made. And way back in 1887 is when this uh, when this happened. Things have of course changed very very drastically after that, and. In the timeline that you see, last year was another very, very uh, critical moment in the photography timeline. Last year saw the end of an era. Kodachrome, Paul Simon even sang a song about it. Uh, Kodachrome was a film, a color film that, that was introduced by Kodak. And for 75 years, it ruled the photography world. Everybody took photographs with a Kodachrome film. <clears throat> In the mid 80s, uh, Kodachrome started dying out. And that was because digital technology started coming into place. And last year, 2009, Kodachrome stopped production. <clears throat> Took 75 years. When you think about uh, photography, there's a group of people who just sort of get attracted to it. That group of people are geeks. At various FOSS conferences which I attend and I go to, I sometimes have to stop and think, am I at a free software conference or am I at a photography convention? Because everyone in that room comes with Maybe not just one camera, maybe with three cameras, lots of lenses, lots of equipment. And the conversation that we have is absolutely tremendous. So geeks do have an affinity to uh, photography, and, and they just seem to come to it all the time. And some of the reasons behind this, I feel, are the fact that it's complex. 
Do not be fooled by that little camera that you hold in your hands. It is a complete computer. The technology that is inside of that is so complex, that's what attracts the geeks. That's what brings them to it. The other part of photography is that it's a challenge. And geeks love a good challenge. If you take the camera that I'm carrying with me today, I still haven't figured it out. I have a 600-page manual to go with it. It's got many options that I wouldn't even dream about. I mean, it's really, really complex. But I know it's going to be entertaining and it's going to be a lot of fun exploring that camera. And I look forward to it. The other thing that geeks really, really like is a new language. You've seen how people who are experts suddenly come up with this colossal amount of jargon. Aperture, exposure, f-stop, focal length, focal distance, you know, it's, it's just mind-boggling. It just keeps going on and on. And when you talk to someone who is a photographer or who is very interested in photography, you actually hear a completely different language. Mm -hmm. It's something that uh, at times can be quite scary. This is just some, some photography terms that I pulled out and, and placed out here, but it, it can actually be quite, uh, quite complex. Where do we go from here? If you look at it, today photography has already reached a point where <clears throat> it's complex, um, yet it's easy. Everybody can use it. It's, it's very, very easy to use a, a, a camera, very easy to use uh, a video. It, it's, uh, you know, it, it's simple. So where are we going from here? They say small is beautiful. And the only time that I would disagree is that when we count our tigers, we're losing our tigers. But when it comes to technology, small is great. <laughs>